Hello everyone, I am Alessa Hering and I present our paper Whole Body Soft Tissue Lesion Tracking and Segmentation in Longitudinal CT Imaging Studies. Since our presented pipeline is independent of the lesion entity, we see our work as a foundation for an efficient follow-up assessment. So we could also shorten the title to How to make tumor follow-up assessment more efficient. In this work, we focus more on solving a clinical problem than on developing new technical methods. Therefore, it is a joint work of Fran Ramirez as the technical partner and the University Hospital Tübingen as the clinical partner. In this video, I will first talk about why do we need to make tumor follow-up uh, assessment more efficient, give an overview of our method, present our results on soft tissue lesions and show a demonstrator of how the software using our algorithm could look like in the clinic. And finally, we will discuss open issues which need to be addressed before it can be used in the clinic. So let's start with the motivation and uh, the question, why do we need to make tumor follow-up more efficient? I probably don't have to tell you that the percentage of people who have cancer in their lifetime is increasing. Fortunately, uh, therapies are becoming more successful and new therapies are being developed. Both yields to a higher workload of radiologists who have to evaluate the efficiency of the cancer treatment. And the measurement of metastatic tumors on longitudinal CT scans is essential to evaluate this efficiency. So before tre the treatment begins, a, CT, uh, a baseline CT scan is acquired on which the radiologist has to find the metastasis in the whole body. After typically three months, a second scan is used to determine if the treatment was successful by comparing it to the baseline image. The current guidelines for uh, metastatic tumor evaluation on CT scans is called Response Evaluation Criteria and Solid tu Tumors Resist. Um, the manual measurement of these tumors for the resist criteria is often uh, time-consuming and um, error-prone. Um, furthermore, in the clinical routine, there is often no time for such an evaluation according to RATSYST, but only for a visual inspection. And in both cases, the measurement is mostly not archived in a structured way, but only in a textual report. In our project, we technicians jointly worked with several radiologists to learn how, to, how we can make their work more efficient and to reduce the assembly line work, as one radiologist called it, or at least make it more bearable. Moreover, because of those new therapy options, it become more important to detect when a patient is not responding to a therapy as early as possible and then adjust the therapy. And that is why our team also includes the hematologist, the specialist for the cancer entity used in the study. Um, in our interviews, we learned that, they, that the radiologists don't want to be taken out of the loop completely they still want to interact with our software. However, the interaction should be as small as possible um, and the smallest uh, interaction we could think of is one click. Therefore, our pipeline starts with one click of the radiologist inside the lesion that should be measured, here indicated by the red cross. After that, we extract a region of interest around this uh, click annotation and automatically uh, segment and measure the lesion. When the follow-up image is acquired, we use a registration algorithm um, to propagate this uh, click annotation to the follow-up image, to the follow-up image and extract the region of interest. And again, we uh, automatically segment and measure the lesion. However, there could be more than one lesion inside this region of interest, so we also have to find the correct one. In our uh, study, we used the data set of the University Hospital of Tübingen, which consists of 206 baseline and follow-up CT scan pairs of patients with metastatic melanoma. Um, we split our data to uh, 163 training and validation cases, which uh, with uh, 2,408 manually annotated soft tissue lesions on the baseline scan. So we do not have a follow-up annotation here. On the 43 test cases, um, we have 125 manually annotated soft tissue lesions on the baseline and the follow-up scan. Uh, for 
uh, 25 of those lesions disappeared in the follow-up image due to the therapy, so uh, the therapy was successful, which is great. Um, the first component of our pipeline is the automatic segmentation after the bounding box or the region of interest was uh, extracted using the click annotation of the radiologist. And due to the success of the NN unit in several challenges, we decided to use this to segment the lesion inside the bounding box. All chosen parameters can be found in our paper. And one important thing I, uh, I want to mention here is the unisotropic resampling because of the slice thickness. In our pipeline, the registration algorithm is employed to find the corresponding image regions. Um, for metastatic melanoma, typically a fully uh, full body or thorax abdomen CT scan is acquired, which can easily have 1000 slices, which can be a challenge in terms of memory usage and runtime. So that's um, something um, which makes the registration harder. Um, the registration has to align the global structures, so the whole body contour, all the organs, but at the same time has to be accurate enough to propagate the lesions uh, precisely. And therefore, uh, we adopted a three-step approach to register the baseline and the follow-up image, which consists of a translational alignment, so first the center alignment and then a translational alignment, which is a brute force grid search uh, algorithm, then a rigid alignment and finally a deformable registration. Hereby the registration starts with um, the the robust method with fewer degrees of freedom and moves on to more precise but less robust methods, which re uh, require better starting points due to the higher degree of freedom. Uh, for more uh, implementation details, just look at our paper. So next, let's look at how the software could look like. Okay, we um, have uh, the baseline image here on the left and on the right there is the follow-up image. And now we want to segment and measure this lesion here, the soft tissue lesion. So we click um, here to um, say that we want to segment a lesion. We can at the moment uh, decide if we want to segment a lymph node or a so uh, soft tissue lesion. And then we just click once in the lesion and the lesion is segmented and measured. So the diameter is shown here. Um, this is done fully automatically on the fly, so nothing is pre-computed for the segmentation. And as you can see here, a structure is created so that we can archive um, our findings uh, properly. Um, now the propagation to the follow-up image could be done automatically, but to show it in a nicer way, we uh, added here a button to propagate um, the lesion in the follow-up image, and again, the lesion is segmented and measured, and as we have seen, the diameter um, has, uh, is uh, larger now, so the lesion is uh, growing. And again, um, a structure is created so that we have now the finding for the baseline image and the follow-up image. Good. Um, let's go back to the um, presentation and look how uh, it works for all the other lesions. In 120 out of the 125 lesions, the lesion was segmented by our method and only in five cases it doesn't segment anything. And those cases uh, where um, the algorithm segmented the lesion, the average dice score is 0 0.79 and the surface dice which allows um, one millimeter variation is 0 0.88. You can also see the um, values for the average surface distance and the house of distance here. Um, on the follow-up image we have first this um, 25 uh, lesions which are disappeared where the algorithm should also not segment anything. Um, there were 17 where the algorithm correctly not segmented something. And um, for the um, other 100 uh, lesions, 80 were segmented correctly with an average dice score of 0 0.8 and a surface dice of 0 0.89. 
but uh, our method failed for a few cases as uh, the numbers um, indicated. So let's uh, have a look on such cases. One reason is that the registration was not accurate enough and therefore a wrong or no lesion was selected even though the correct lesion was segmented. For example here, on the byte line image, um, the lesion, so the red line is a manually, uh, manual segmentation and the blue line this um, segmentation of the NN unit. It works quite well, but on the follow-up image, um, the propagated lesion, uh, indicated by the yellow line here, was too far away and uh, something inside was segmented by the NN unit, which was chosen as the correct lesion here. Um, this uh, part is taken out of the abdomen, so there is quite a lot of movement there. So, um, yeah, the registration has to handle a lot. Another reason is that it's just hard to distinguish from the, the lesion was just hard to distinguish from the surrounding uh, tissue. So, for example, here um, it's hard to say where the lesion is or where not the same in this case. Or there is an untypical shape uh, that might cause problems, like uh, in this case down here. And in some cases, it, um, it's even difficult for a radiologist to identify and segment the lesion correctly. So what, do, uh, what are the next steps to bring it into the clinic? Um, at the moment we consider um, the, um, co um, the position of the baseline uh, lesion um, for the follow-up image using the registration. However, we could also use the knowledge about the appearance of the baseline image or the baseline lesion for the follow-up segmentation. Furthermore, we have to consider that lesion can split or merge over time due to therapy or just um, because uh, the, the cancer just grows. We have to train the pipeline for more lesion types, obviously. We have to evaluate the trained uh, networks also for other tumor entities. Now we have just used, the, um, used patients uh, with metastatic melanoma, but for other um, tumor entities, the metastasis also could look different. Uh, we have to evaluate whether the trained networks show uh, a bias, so for scanner type, a gender, uh, ethnicity, all those important things uh, we have to uh, have a look on. And obviously we um, uh, use the software in the clinic to see where also um, where our other problems are. So thank you for watching our video and I'm looking forward to uh, discuss more in the live uh, sec session um, and at our poster. Thank you!